YouTube. I'm back again today for another gameplay impression video with my lovely wife, Melina. And we have been exploring our way through Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. We have gone through the first four uh, years, I guess you would call it. This is a, an episodic content sort of game where you'll start off at year one and you'll have a very bare bones game. Then slowly as you go through the games and through the books, you will be adding a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, adding complexity complexity and difficulty to the game. So, so far we are through uh, books number one through four. Yep. Little prelude. We are both huge Harry Potter fans. Uh, we both midnight books, you know, seeing the movies. I went to a couple of the midnight movie things. The only IMAX movie I've ever been to was Harry Potter. Uh, we're big, big fans. So, high expectations for this game Initial thoughts, we have played four games of it, all two players going through books one through four. We have yet to lose yet. What are your initial thoughts on the game? I like it. I mean, it does start off very simple. I think the first game is pretty quick. Yeah, and, and that's by design. I'm pretty sure yeah. this is definitely designed, aimed at a family audience, um, I think in mind. Now, once we get to oh, yeah. books five, six, and seven... That might change, but right now with books one through four, I don't think I'd really recommend this as a game night type it's, of game. See, no, it seems to progress as the books progress. Yeah. So essentially, in this game, it is a cooperative deck building game. You're going to start out with a deck of cards, asymmetrical deck of cards. So she, she has her own kind of fancy cards, and I have my own slightly fancier things that will do kind of different stuff. And then you are going to build up your deck. Um, I don't want to spoil too much but as you progress through it you'll start to gain more spells more special abilities you're going to defeat uh, you're going to have to deal with different villains each turn you're going to have a dark arts card that's revealed that something bad will happen either you'll lose health uh, you might have to discard a card you might have to add these little metal tokens to the location and if you get too many tokens on a location uh, you go to the next location and if you go to too many locations you lose the game but it definitely is on the more simple side, at least up to book number four, which is where we are, game number four. We have yet to go from location one. Wait, we did once. We have only gone to oh, location yeah, number two one time. And that's one thing I do worry about with this game, is I feel like it starts off really difficult, and then you get so many good cards in your hand, it's just like towards the end, at least so far, it's just been like, it's, it's been predetermined we were going to win. Uh, I, honestly, we had the same problem with Pandemic Legacy, I think, where it got to the point where it's like, we're going to win this game. Was... It's still enjoyable to play the game, right? but towards the end, it's like, eh, there's no, there's not even that much point to buying cards, because I know... Because we didn't need to. Um, so what do you think about the actual pictures? So this game actually has pictures, uh, real-life pictures from, from the, the movies. movies. Mm -hmm. Some people like that, some people don't. What do you think about that? I like it. I like it, too. I think it helps with the theme. I think, I think the game does work kind of thematically. I feel like it is a somewhat thematic game. And especially if you're a fan of the movies and the books, you're going to see a lot of nods to a lot of different things there, which I like that. I like, you know, I'm excited after each game to open up another box. Mm -hmm. And I think if you have kids who are into Harry Potter, they're going to be you know, super excited to see what it is, see the new cards. Be like, oh yeah, like I was just looking at the new cards for game five and I was like, oh yeah, this guy, I, I like that guy. And now I want to go back and watch the movie. Um... So, so far, I enjoy the game, but there's definitely some flaws here. I think, I think that has to be addressed. As the game progresses, the games get longer. Because what it just does is it, it does. adds more heroes to the game. And a longer game is not necessarily no, it adds a bad thing. more villains. Or yeah, more villains to the game. A longer game isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you feel like you're going to win halfway through the game, and yet you're still going to play for another 30 minutes, it's like, it, that is a little bit annoying, I think. Um, some of the cards I feel are not, some of the cards just feel like they're better than other cards at yes. the same cost. Well, let's put in there too, that if we ever went to location two at this point in time, like the game's going to get exponentially harder. That is a very fair point. And I feel like we made that exact same point. I feel like there's a lot of comparisons here with Pandemic Legacy here, where it could just be that we're getting really lucky because... Uh -huh. Certain combinations of villains, because right now we're to the point where you're going to have two villains per on the board at a time, but eventually you'll get up to three villains at a time, which at that point I'd be like, ooh, it's really going to ramp it up, because each villain has his own unique quirk that they do, which is bad, and some of them will stack together and make things incredibly difficult. I could see that happening. Um, I 
also like how well yeah let's let's keep talking about that um i like how the stun system works you don't die in this game you get stunned and getting stunned isn't a huge deal you don't even lose your turn you only lose a couple cards you get to keep fighting which is nice um is there anything else you I mean, don't that like? is the part that sucks like if you've got anything on your like if you've got any tokens you lose those what do you think about the token system i like it i like it too um it's very helpful to help keep track of all your cards that you're playing, too. Yeah, the first game, the first actually first game or two, we're like, oh, this is dumb. Why do we need these tokens? And then we, as it starts to really, yeah. as the game gets more complex, it's like, oh, yeah, you get a heart, and you get those, a coin, and you get this. Yeah, those are really, very really helpful. Um, there's dice. I feel like that's not too much of a spoiler, but there's dice that come into the game. So far, they're, eh, I mean, I can take them or leave them. I mean, it's cool. Like, I was really excited when I saw the dice, but so far it's just, eh, they really don't have much of an effect. So I'm hoping those get a little bit more implemented as we progress. Um, anything else you really think about? Nope. One more thing. One more thing that I just thought about. And this is, this is I think this is going to be a con for some people, is that in most deck builders, you really try to fine-tune your deck. And this might not be as much for you, but yeah, when, like in Dominion, you try and get coins. You try and get a lot of coins. Mm -hmm. You generally have a specific task that you want your hand to achieve when you draw your hand. It's a lot more difficult to do that in this game because A, you can't trash cards, and B, you are so strapped for cash at the beginning of the game, and the cards that come up are very random, that you can't really fine-tune your deck a lot of the time to do what you want to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, if you're trying to get a card, a hand that is really, you know, about drawing cards, that might not always be possible because the six cards that are out of the biro, they might not have any that let you draw cards. So you still want to purchase cards because they're good and they're useful, but it's really hard to kind of fine-tune your deck, which is something that I did notice and that, that is a little bit annoying to me. But overall, I, I feel like we both really enjoy the game so far. Mm -hmm. Now, Absolutely. here's the big question. If this were not Harry Potter, and this were just some generic fantasy theme, would you enjoy it? Like, that that's a very fair point there. Because I remember... I we, think that is a fair point. Because we said that exact same thing about Pandemic Legacy, where it was like, if this was a pandemic, I don't think we would finish this. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Because... Uh, I think with as long as a game is, going through all seven books, it has to be Harry Potter. Well, that's another valid point, too. The, the fact that it's episodic content, I think, would keep us coming back to it. Be like, I'm hoping something cool happens here. Uh, but one thing I do like over, the, over Pandemic Legacy, over this, and I, I don't know why I'm comparing those two this much, is that this game, it adds more each time, but there's no story here. This is just, it's just, it's more cards, and you can do more stuff, and you have more villains that correlate to the story. So if you don't know Harry yeah, Potter, I, mean, I don't... I don't think this is a game that you should get if you don't know Harry Potter. Honestly, I think that's. I think that's. A, I don't. I know. I think people could still enjoy it if they don't know Harry Potter because it doesn't. Yeah, but I think it's really gonna suck out some of your enjoyment. Not necessarily. You may not enjoy it as much as people who know it and are in the fandom, but. Yeah. Um, Component-wise, components very nice. Mm -hmm. No complaints on the components. Box got box got a decent box insert, um, and I feel like this is a game that is definitely worth your money. And that that's something that you know I feel is important with a lot of games. But this is this is a pretty expensive game. I mean, I imagine it's probably 60, 70, 80 bucks. I feel like it's worth your game. You're gonna play at a bare minimum, probably seven games, unless you do unless you're a hard, more hardcore gamer. Because it says if you're a regular gamer, you should start at game three, which I think is about right. Maybe even game four. Yeah. Um, but overall, I think we're both in agreement that we both enjoy this game, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I'm excited to see what comes forward. We're about to start having three villains down there, which I'm sure will amp up the difficulty. We'll probably do an impression video after we get through Game 7, and then obviously a review, of course. But for the time being, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, am I recommending it for your game night? Probably not. But am I recommending it? Well, here's the thing, but we're playing it as a couple, though. Which, well, yeah, but that's because we have a three-year-old and a ten-month-old. Yeah, but if we, even if we didn't, we'd still want to play this game. Like, I would still be really excited yeah, to play this I game. Yeah, but I still wouldn't. I still wouldn't recommend it for game night. Well, at at if the current couple, state, if you're a couple that enjoys Harry Potter, yes. Yes, I. Yeah. So, as a two-player game, I think. If you're a family, yes. 
I, I really do enjoy this. Uh, and that's another thing. We've, we're only playing this from a two-player perspective. I think the game actually might be slightly easier with more players. Because be. there's a lot of cards that will give other things to other people. It'll be like, everybody gets to draw a card. Everybody gets a coin. Uh, I don't know. Can't really speak to that. Either way, we're enjoying this. I think if you're looking at this as a family game, absolutely. We're only halfway through. I think this is a fantastic family game that you really should look out. I like how they do everything. I like the box inserts. I like how they do the rules. I like the fact that once you get done going through all the different books, you can put everything easily back into the box and just restart it. That's really good. This isn't like a legacy-style game where it's destroyed after you're done. Uh, there's a lot to like about this game. I don't know if it's the best game night game yet, but we still have games 5, 6, and 7 to go through, and I still really enjoy this game. So overall, Harry Potter's Hogwarts Battles, right now, two thumbs up for both of us. So that's four thumbs. That's a lot of thumbs. <laughs> You're, it's ridiculous. You don't, what are you going to do with four thumbs? Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know what would you do with four thumbs. I don't know. Well, you got you got to answer. I got to answer. You. My answer is I don't know. Yeah, what I mean, would you do with four thumbs? The longer you stall, the more time I have to think, too, which is good. <laughs> I guess I'd hitchhike a lot. <laughs> there you go. Well, let me know in the comments below. What would you do with four thumbs? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.